In this video I want to add some sounds, so if you saw the video, uh, the work in progress, part 2, you'll remember that I had some leaf rustling, foliage stuff sound playing when I walk through them, and you can also hear I have sound on now. Um, so first of all, if you want to recreate exactly what I did, or close to, you will go into freesound.org and search for foliage and here you have a sound specifically called uh, foliage rustling 001 by Duck Duck Pony so credits to you for making some awesome video or uh, some awesome uh, sound file available thank you and um, I'm just going to use this uh, one file here so go ahead and download that first and then you want to drag that sound into your project I have it here. I was trying a few things, so after experimenting a little bit with it, I ended up with this sound. There you go. Let's try that again. Hello. That's weird. Okay. But I'm gonna go and import it instead. That's so weird. Okay, anyway, save that. And um, inside our fern blueprint, um, we want to detect when we hit something. So whenever our character is running into it or something else is uh, hitting it, um, we want to actually just our character for now um, so we can go down here and see component hit and print out a little something so that's a low so whenever we uh, run into our ferns we should get a hello uh, and we will notice that nothing is happening we don't see anything and the reason for that is we didn't set up the simulation generates hits event during physics simulation because our um, little fern here is simulating physics and still we don't get anything uh, and that was something that was um, taking me a little bit of time to figure out but if you go into your physics asset uh, and select all your branches uh, and select simulation generate hit events also in here then you will see uh, a lot of hit events now firing. Okay. One thing to to note is that um, when you um, activate quite a few of these and you stand in them, you will keep generating um, hit events at a very fast pace, and you don't want sounds to play constantly for all of them. So we need to handle that in a, in a little while here. So let's get rid of the hello here and we'll be using an audio component because um, that gives us a little bit of freedom in terms of uh, controlling how we play it and when to fade out and so on um, which play sound at location doesn't really as far as I could tell so type in audio and for the audio sound file we'll select the duck duck pony foliage rustling and oh, let's call this um, foliage sound so you want to play this one but as mentioned you don't want to play it if it's already playing we can just to begin with just type in play um, oops play and just go with that first you can hear now right now the sound is playing and it's constantly playing so right now I'm standing in on top of it and it's firing uh, the play constantly. And since it starts at a, a fairly low volume to begin with, it's not even going to play. So we want to drag this out and say range. And you want to check if this foliage sound is playing.
and only then you want to play it. Uh, sorry, if it's not already playing. <laughs> not. Right. Okay. So you also notice that once the actor is getting destroyed, the sound stops immediately. And we don't want the sound to keep playing anyway. So um, this is something you need to experiment a little bit with uh, to, to get uh, a good behavior. But I'm gonna for now. I'm just gonna add a delay and go with this 0 0.2. And then I want to, um, instead of just stopping the sound immediately, that's going to sound weird. I'm going to um, um, fade out and I'm going to give it um, zero point, half a second to fade out to zero. And when that is done, so insert a delay of uh, the same uh, length here. So instead of typing in 0 0.5 here, I'm going to create a variable called fade out um, duration as a float, compile and compile and set this to 0 0.5 and then hook that up in here and also for the delay. And once that delay is passed, we will stop the sound. So, um, and I forgot to disable auto activate like that. Okay, as you can hear, it's still playing. And once I leave it, it's stopping. And the thing is, it's uh, playing no matter if we are moving or not. So we want to add a little logic to control that. So our other actor is going to have a, that's going to be us. He's going to have a velocity. So get velocity and um, get length vector. Get length of this and um, we want to, to begin with, we actually uh, don't want to do anything if this is, uh, if it, this isn't greater than zero. So uh, it needs to be greater than zero and it also needs to be not already playing something. So, uh, and these two together, like that. And uh, go away, we don't need you. And that means that the sound is not going to play if we don't move. So as you can hear, it sounds kind of um, boring because it's the same. So we need uh, to create a little bit of variation for this to be um, something a little bit better. And the way to do that is to look at the sound as it that we dragged in, uh, because it's it's quite long. And right now we are only using just a few seconds of it. So it's uh, 43 uh, seconds long, this one, and it has a quite uh, steady sound going on all the way through. And the uh, volume uh, dif uh, difference isn't that big. So that's why we can do this. Um, so w what we're going to do is to go in here and say when we play it, we want to play um, at a random time in the sound uh, to start. So tab in random. Uh, float in range, so we'll pick any place between 0 and 40 seconds, and um, that's going to create this variation. So you can see maybe here it's uh, already creating um, a little variation. 
Now, uh, right now it's playing at the same volume all the time, so um, um, in order to make a variation on that as well, I'm going to make a check to see how fast we move through this. Um, so I'm just going to take all of that and move a little bit to the side. So we're going to set, um, set um, the volume multiplier um, to be dependent on the speed that we move. <clears throat> so the speed is found uh, here in vector length and since we are constantly running right now we will in our max um, movement speed is 600 we want to create a multiplier between uh, 0 and 1 so we get that by dividing it by zero, six, uh, 600 and um, what we also could do I haven't done that uh, in, in my uh, video but um, I think I'm also going to multiply this by a little uh, times ran uh, random float in range and I'm going to give it 0 0.9 and 1.1 so a little variation here also uh, to multiply in here uh, so to check that okay so So that means if we just turn, we are barely making any sound. But it, as soon as I start running, we make a lot of sound. Okay, so in order to test this a little bit better, I'm going to add a setting to control our running. So go into the project settings and the active action mappings and add a new run button. I'm going to set this to a Danish letter. And under my character here, I will add run and the character movement. I have a max walk speed set to 600. I'm going to set this to 200, which means we'll be walking initially. And um, whenever I press this key down, I'm going to set max walk speed to 600. And if I'm not, I'm gonna set it uh, back to 200. So I need to keep my key pressed in um, to be running. Right? So um, that means that when we move like this, we're gonna make this kind of noise. And as soon as I start running, And here the sound is quite a bit lower when we just walk. As soon as I run, we're making tons of noise. Okay. One thing you will also, no also notice is that the sound despawns pretty fast. And that's because our um, setting that we made from last time is pretty low. So um, that's something you want to balance. Um, to be maybe a little bit better so let's set this up to five, 500 would maybe be a good value for um, for the foliage sphere when you will uh, despawn them so if we are running you remember we will um, check if foliage is behind us and if it's uh, still also um, uh, within 500 uh, meaning five meters uh, then we'll despawn if it's behind us you can see it's gonna uh, it's something you you want to take a, a look at because if i'm keeping as you can see now i'm keeping them in view and it's not going to be a problem if i'm running like this um, but yeah just a little uh, note about that <clears throat> um, one thing also you want to take a look at um, is the attenuation um, you can add uh, a little bit of realism to that by adding a sound attenuation sound attenuation here and let's just call this sound attenuation um, so if you 
uh, unwrap this one. Uh, you definitely want to change this attenuation linear to be a natural sound. And maybe also lower this to, let's say, 200 and 1000. And you want to add this to your um, foliage sound. And what this is going to do is to make sure that it's the sound is going to fall off based on the distance to your uh, the sound playing. And this may not seem uh, like anything really uh, making any difference at all, but uh, we can try with uh, this disabled uh, just for a second before we end this video. Um, so if we uh, find what did I put it? Yeah. We just disable this just for now. Just clear this one, and I set my um, play duration to ten seconds, and I run into this. What? I cleared the sound. Sorry. <laughs> Clear the sound attenuation. As you can hear the sound is pretty high. And it sounds like it's on top of us, really. So that's not really so good. Um, but with the sound attenuation on, whoops. You see here the sound is getting lower. Maybe, maybe I need to change it down a little bit. What do I have here? 10,000. Okay, sorry. I needed this to be 1,000. Okay, I hope you can hear that. So, whenever I play it here, you can hear the difference. Okay, but that's something you definitely want to play around with. Um, so we're going to return to this uh, once we make the grenade, and that's going to be in the next video. So thank you for watching, and see you in the next. Bye-bye.